Welcome back, travelers, to Legendary Lore, where we are finally concluding the Children of the Nameless arc that we have been doing for this uh, past few weeks. Joe, <laughs> how are you feeling? I love this story, but I'm also ready for it to end. Yes, so am I. I'm ready to get to the Midnight Hunt soon. But before we can do that, let's find out what happens to Tessenda and Davriel. When we last left off, Davriel and Tessenda discovered that Willia was the one behind all the different shenanigans going on in the approaches. And they uh, had just had Davriel blinded by the light. And Tessenda realizes that morning is approaching, meaning that her vision will also soon be fading. Crunchnar and Miss Highwater are gone. Miss Highwater's okay. Crunchnar is not. Crunchnar is very much not. He is evaporated. He is dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. So basically, Tessenda tries to lead Davriel away uh, from that room, and she can like see the sun rise starting to happen, right? And she can feel the second darkness descending. And then she's blind. So now both of our heroes are completely unable to see, and Willia continues to follow them, her footsteps echoing. She says, I should have been strong enough to kill you myself. I didn't have trouble stabbing the priest so my spirits can enter the church. Afterward, I stood behind you in the village, knife in hand, and I heard you begin singing. I have always loved that song, Tessenda. It's like, what? And she even says, Willia, this is insane. You're not like this. And she goes, what am I like? Am I the confident girl that everyone saw? Or am I the terrified one you saw? The one who knew that every night the darkness would come for her again. And so we kind of get this, this back and forth. It's very good writing. Exceptional. And but, because they're sisters, they're both green, white, and then uh, Wilia is intended to be Abzan while uh, Tessenda is supposed to be Naya, right? Correct. That is pretty much correct. And so all of this is happening. And Tessenda is trying to convince Wilia this is not you. And Willie is saying, this is me. <laughs> this is what we are. We are of one soul and one power, but there can only be one of us. I need to add you to put back. I need to take your soul to put back into me to create the entity. And take your soul. <laughs> and she says, the entity's destiny is to become whole again. And she's like, well, what about the priests? What was your excuse for killing them? And basically, Willie just says, I'm not going to be weak. Because every time I claim a little bit, I get a little bit more light. She goes, right now, I'm only blind for a few hours around midnight. If she gets the full entity, she will not be blind at all. They can, she continues to grope through the, the, the thing with Davriel behind her, and she's trying to follow things, right? And as Tessenda is trying to find it, she feels something. She hears something. She hears a song above the whispers a song that feels familiar to her but she's never she can't quite remember how it goes and so while this is happening davriel is going down the corridor and he's pull, now he's pulling to send up because he just got his eyesight back and he can tell that she's blind now now and he's realizing like he should have saw all of this coming it, she, it obviously had to be willia because she had all these different things figured out it only made sense if it was her and I'm going to stop real quick here and just mention the fact that this is such a good mystery. I obviously knew it because I read it. You watching it probably already know it if you read it. But the fact that you don't know what's going to happen until it's happened. And all the hints are there. Because it turns out that the only reason people thought that Willia was dead was because she purposefully OD'd on Dust Willow. They gave us that hint earlier in the book. Yes. Yes, they did. Willia's body had, had was taken to the Priory. All these other things happened. And there's little hints throughout that Willia was the one that was and behind And the bog her. spirits not being able to get to, to Senda. You had to know it was some kind of bog entity. Someone who had the entity as well, which would have been Willia. There was also the connection of the spirits recognized to Senda as looking or being similar to their master. Not just because of the bog entity, but because they're twins. And so Davriel, such a good story. It's a super great story. And so Davriel's trying to escape. And Tassin does like, no, we go this way. Look for murals on the wall. Ron said that one of them would lead to hidden exits. And so he's like, sure, okay. And so there's like green light 
just glowing from beyond. He's like, ah, spirits, not the spirits. And so they keep running and they keep trying and they're doing everything they can to get away from this. And then he says, you would run as a coward before using me? Why? Because in that moment, Davriel thinks, I could just leave. All I have is the weapon summoning spell that can get me a viol and the ability to make ink appear on any surface. Other than that, my pyromancy is gone, my dismissal is gone, my, my reward is gone. The All that stuff is gone. All I've got is the ability to make a viol appear in my hand and the ability to make ink appear wherever I want. I'm useless. If I run Louis away- Louis MacGyver his way out of this. <laughs> I'll paint the viol. What did that do? It made it cooler. It's more metal now. So as they're running, Davriel's like, okay, I still have the ability to make spirits corporeal. So I just have to use this smartly. So he's running down a very narrow corridor where there's a bunch of spirits, right? So then it's when that happens that he shoots a blast that basically makes them all turn physical and they all kind of get stuck in the in the hallway on each other and they're having to like wiggle their way out. So it gives them just a little bit more time because Willie was behind the spirits so now she has to wait for them to get through. And so he's kind of yanking to send a, trying to get to where they can. And Willie is, and to send says, Willie will know about the secret exits. That must be how she got in and out after they brought her body here. So be careful. And so Davriel realizes that all the exits are probably blocked by geists. And that's bad. It, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's, it's, they're in a really bad spot. And so as they're, as they're going like from tunnel to tunnel to send it like pulls them down one, he'll pull her down another. And they kind of keep like zigzagging kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then Willia calls, what would you do to know that you'd never again be afraid, to know that you'd never again be hunted, to forever banish the things that scratched at your door at night, to for once rule instead of be ruled. High rule. And Devril tells her, there's always a price. And sometimes it's too high to pay. It's simple economics. And the entity, of course, is screaming in Davriel's ear, use me, use me, why do you wait? Why do you hesitate? And Davriel's going to go down the left corridor. Tisenda says, no, this way. This way toward the song. And he's like, that's a dead end. We visited that chamber earlier tonight. She goes, but it had a mural. Maybe it's a way out. And so the guys continue to flood and they eventually get to the stone. It's, it's from her perspective. So she's like reaching rough, rough stone everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And she can feel that second darkness continue to swallow her. But she can hear the song, a sweet, beautiful, mournful song. And she's feeling ar around, trying to figure it out. And she's kind of going through all these different things. She's thinking about the fact that her entire family is dead. And the only one that's not is a murderer and the one who killed them. And she's thinking, poor Willia, terrified of the second darkness, that she had hid from it until at long last it had claimed her as its own, just not in the way either of them had feared. And so she can still hear the music the, the, that's in the thing. She can hear everything else happening in the background. And he's like, hey, Adarville tells her, Descenda, you need to figure out what you're doing now. They're getting very, very close, and I can't do anything. <laughs> and Willia tells him, your reputation is very useful. Everyone was so eager to believe you were a murderer. And Davriel says, look, I want to insult you with an offer of riches, but I am worth more than a simple lucre. Let me live. I can tell you many things about that voice inside your head. Davriel tries to reason with Willia, says, look, spare me and I'll teach you how to use the entity. And then she says, yeah, it said you try to make a deal, but also told me that you have something I need something that will make me so strong nobody will ever again be able to challenge me because i got this feel <laughs> and so descenda continues to feel the thing and she feels the angel's hand and then she finds a carved version of the sealant stone and then she presses the button and everyone's like would you really kill your own sister are you that heartless and really a pauses and she says descenda has always had the voice of an angel and do you know what the angels did to us man of the manor the same thing every lord, devil, and demon in this land has done. They bled us, so we bled them back. And so Tessenda is able to press the button, just like Rama taught her, and she gets through. And she finds the source of the song. 
And Davril gasps. And she says, what is it? What do you see? And Davril says, it's her. This is an exceptional moment because it is at this point that it is revealed that the nameless angel has been nailed to the wall. And she's in red and, a red and white robe. And she is like, she's colorful against the grave, like a rose on a grave. And each of her wings are pierced by thick iron spikes. And she's, she's there and she is super dead. But what's really weird is that she's dead, but she's an angel. Angels, demons, those things, they're constructs of magic. They don't have bodies in the traditional sense. They fade away after dying. But this one didn't. This one's nailed there and it's basically still bleeding. Its throat has been slit and there's still blood pouring out of it. It's funny because this is Davril's like, impression of it. He says, what an incredible waste. What an injustice that something so beautiful had been ruined here in this crude prison. This was a heavenly place where men died. Something this heavenly should not have been forced to suffer such a mundane fate. And then Davril gets mad at himself saying, your mortality betrays you. This thing wasn't pure or grand or innately good. It was created to evoke those emotions in you. <laughs> like even in this, this moment, he wants to maintain his meh, 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 meh kind of thing. Cynical attitude. And then Willia tells him, she doesn't decompose. Nobody knows why. The blood stays wet all these months. They made Rom do it, you know. Locked her away when the madness struck her. And Rom, he came to the Priory to escape the blood. But as soon as he got here, they made him kill our god. It's pretty messed up. <laughs> and so you have to send a, she's at the wall uh, where the angel is. And she's kind of just kneeling beside it, listening to the song. While Davriel is suddenly just like, beset upon by so many spirits and Descenda starts to sing and Davriel is like he can feel his soul slipping out of his body he's getting dementored and he's trying everything again he's using the last of Descenda's warding ability just that little bit to keep himself together but it's not enough and in that moment he tried to flee he tried to run away but he couldn't because the whispers were holding on to his soul and he was anchored to Innistrad. He had waited too long. And in that moment, he actually panics. The, like the entity continues to try and reach into him and tell him, hey, use me, use me, use me. You're going to die, use me. And then Davriel screams at him, I will not be that man again. He feels the spirits hold on him loosen. All the geists have stopped moving and they're all looking at the dead angel or so he thinks. But he realizes they're not looking at the angel, they're looking at Descenda and she's humming. And this is because this is a different song. And he tells her, keep going. And he summons the viol to his hand and he, he allows the, the, like the music basically to play. And while she's humming, she's taking the angel down and she's holding the angel's face in her hand while she hums the song. And as she sings, she can hear her viol responding to her, playing alongside her. Even in this darkness, she can feel something glowing above her and she can actually see the angel basically. And she says that it's a song that she doesn't know that she had forgotten it. And she says it's the angel's soul. It's still here trapped. And Angel's like, I mean, and Davriel's like, that's nonsense. Angels are creations of magic, like demons. They don't have souls. And then she touches the light in her mind. And she hears the voice. Child, why have you stopped singing? And she's like, well, how can I sing when they're all dead? I've forgotten the warmth of the sun. I've lost my sister to the true darkness. How can I possibly sing now? And the angel responds, this is when songs are most needed. And so basically, I'm not going to go through each individual thing they say, but basically she says, listen to the music and sing it, hear the song. And she begins to let that emotion kind of burn through her. And she can feel cold fingers on her skin begin to warm as they, rem as like she remembers the day in the sun, the, the light that she couldn't see, but she could feel. 
And she remembered the days of singing those songs with the workers, with the women in the village, the children dancing around her. And all of that she uses to light a fire, to make her own light. And Davriel is just against the wall. He's just like leaning against, he's like, oh, please just keep singing. <laughs> it's an impossibly joyful song. And all the geists are memorized, mesmerized by it. The geists begin to unmelt and they begin to stop quivering and start basically reverting back to the normal face. And they suddenly were the people that they were in life. And it says that Davriel had never in his life been so happy to see a group of peasants. <laughs> and this, this is just this continuous thing. And Willia is the only one who's not really like, yeah, she's growling and she's shaking. And she reaches toward to Senda to strangle her or to, to pull her towards her. And Dario's like, no. And he uses the only spell he has left, Joe. What is the last spell he has? The ink. And he chooses, the surfaces he chooses are Willia's eyes. <sighs> this was one of the most epic twists I had ever experienced in a book because he used the magic so creatively in such a manner that he, well, I'll just say what she says. She screamed immediately, stumbling and falling to the ground. The darkness, no, I banished you. The second darkness. It's beautiful that Willia's descent into evil, into darkness, was to c conquer the blindness that she experienced. And it, it was a simple ink spell that brought her back into a permanent state of that. I love it. It's so crazy. It's just, it's so crazy. And the music continues, and Davriel has an urge to dance. <laughs> and then all the spirits start to walk towards Tessenda. And they're pulsing with this light, somehow more alive than they were before. And each of them begin to merge into her, into her, dozens upon dozens walking into the room, moving into her. And they begin to go faster and faster, pulsing, and they all enter to Senda. And Willie is there clawing at her face, trying to make herself see. She goes, what happened to the geists? And to Senda tells her they remembered who they were. And Willie says, she remembers that song. And she says, I just wanted to escape the darkness. And she tells her, I'm sorry, Willia, but there, for you must be a third darkness. And when Descenda pushes her sister, Willia's body falls and light emerges from her, a sickly green, and it fades away. And as soon as that happens, a much more powerful green light bursts out of the corpse and goes into Sasenda. And her eyes are like super big, the light just encompasses her as the entity basically is completed. And it tells Davriel, that, that Davriel's entity says, she'll be overcome by the power for a short time and your talent gives you an ideal opportunity. Reach out and take her power and you can have us both. And Davriel instinctively just reaches out and he can feel the complete power of the bog and it, it doesn't push him away because for that moment, it's just as confused because it's like kind of just trying to reorient itself. And he sees that he can have this exceptional power. And he saw himself with that power, destroying enemy after enemy after enemy on an endless throne. And he thinks to himself, no time for word puzzles or time spent reading while Miss Highwater tries to figure out how to cook human food. No time to sleep. He's not a hero, but he doesn't know what he wants. And he discovered that truth after that terrible personal experience. He would not become that man again. So he withdraws his hand and leaves the power. Meanwhile, Tessenda can see now. And there's this huge power inside of her. And the voice inside of her says, you've been chosen and you have done well. And she falls to her knees and she can feel every soul inside of her. And she's like, you're in all of us, even when they approach us. But in me and my sister, you were strongest. 
and then she basically explains to her everything that we have already we've already talked about and it consumes her the light and she says can you restore my sister can we make things go back to the way they were and then she says no the her choice has changed her and those around her forever life and growth and she says i rediscovered the song of joy shouldn't that make things better and she's like different yes but better is a human perception i will not force you to bear me if you wish to release me to another you may do so or in turn you can keep me and use my strength as your power so this is a different kind of entity davriel's is a black mana entity this one is a green white entity as you can tell from the way it functions it acts differently than davriel's entity does mm -hmm. and she's like well what if you what if I, if I use you will i become evil like willia and she says that depends on your choices because you can go back to what you were either way you can return to your village without me and be changed or you can take me and still be changed because only the dead ever stop changing and descendant says okay i will bear this power i will have you and it's in that moment the perspective slams into Tessenda like the weight of a mountain. And she sees worlds, hundreds and hundreds of them, and so many people. And she felt all the memories of all the ages and the essence of all the people who had come before her. And she feels the weight of 10,000 souls. And then she lets a few of them go. The ones in the priory, the ones in the village. She sends them back to their bodies. She releases those geists back into their forms. She doesn't send her parents because she knows that they don't have bodies and not her sisters because, well, she, her sister's soul basically had evaporated under all that power. And she goes up to Davriel and Davriel's looking worse for wear and she touches the side of his face and she says, thank you. And she stabbed her power into his head and drew the small piece of her strength he had taken from her earlier. <laughs> but never try to reach into my mind again. And then to send a plane's walks. We'll get more into that in the last bit. Now we're just gonna talk about the epilogue. So to Davriel, he's kind of just sitting there and he's in the prioress's chair with her tea telling him like, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the happiest ending to me. Davriel finally got his tea. <laughs> and he's like, that's, that, that's when he's like, you shouldn't keep secrets from me about the tea. He goes, I found an entire tin of Verlassen Dust Willow in your cupboard. I expect you to explain yourself post haste. <laughs> <laughs> and so he explains to her, look, we can basically just get back to normal. And she looks at what he's been working on, like what he's been writing. And it's this contract with a whole bunch of demonic stuff on it, demonic writing. And he reveals to her, he basically catches her up on everything. And she kind of freaks out about it. So the Prioress is super happy because Davriel solved everything for her and she was able to live even though her soul got ripped out of her. And so she's like, I'll tell everyone that you're such a good man. I'll tell everyone that you saved the town. I'll tell everyone that all the different things that you did. And Davriel's like, no, I want to be left alone. Don't tell these peasants. Yeah, if you tell people I'm a good guy, they're going to look for me. Why would I want that? <laughs> just tell them I'm nothing tell them I'm useless tell them to leave me alone and we're good it's like I'm not also, evil enough to go after but I'm not good enough to help them yeah he goes also I'm taking your tea <laughs> this will be my payment yeah pretty much and she's, she's like wait what is all this and she's like were you summoning demons in my chambers he's like don't worry it's all fine it's just one demon. And so he summons the demon and it's Miss Highwater. D uh, Miss Highwater's like, so did you did you take it? Did you take the whole deal? And he's like, no, I didn't. Uh, she deserved it more. Tessenda definitely needed it more. She did most of the work. She sang, she reclaimed the souls. You could have seen it, it was very heroic. And she goes, I don't, I don't think you believe in heroism. And he goes, nonsense. I absolutely accept that it is enough to do what others believe they possess. As for Mr. Verlison, well, truth is that I needed to prove a point. And she goes, by doing nothing? Nothing is the very thing to which I am best suited. Come, do you think we can expect the peasant to get back to the harvest today? They have spent an entire day dead, so they should be well rested. And I appear to be down to a single tin of tea. <laughs> and it is with that that this story ends. <laughs>